The 2010 Chile earthquake Spanish, Terremoto del 27F, occurred off the coast of central Chile on Saturday 27 February at 3.34 local time, 6 coordinated universal time having a magnitude of 8.8 .8 on the moment magnitude scale, with intense shaking lasting for about three minutes. It was felt strongly in six Chilean regions from Valparaiso in the north to Araucania in the south, that together make up about 80% of the country's population. According to the United States Geological Survey USGS, the cities experiencing the strongest shaking eight severe on the Merkley Intensity Scale MM were Concepcion, Araco and Coronel. According to Chile's seismological service Concepcion experienced the strongest shaking at MMIX violent. The earthquake was felt in the capital Santiago at MM7 very strong or MM8. Tremors were felt in many Argentine cities, including Buenos Aires, Córdoba, Mendoza and La Rioja. Tremors were felt as far north as the city of Ica in southern Peru 2,400 kilometers 1,500 miles away, the earthquake triggered a tsunami which devastated several coastal towns in south-central Chile and damaged the port at Talcahuano. Tsunami warnings were issued in 53 countries, and the wave caused minor damage in the San Diego area of California and in the Tohoku region of Japan, where damage to the fisheries business was estimated at 6.26 billion yen .7 million. The earthquake also generated a blackout that affected 93% of the Chilean population and which went on for several days in some locations. President Michel Bachelet declared a «state of catastrophe» and sent military troops to take control of the most affected areas. According to official sources, 525 people lost their lives, 25 people went missing and about 9% of the population in the affected regions lost their homes. On the 10th of March, Swiss Reinsurance Co. estimated that the Chilean quake would cost insurance companies between 4 and 7 billion dollars. The rival German-based Munich Reag made the same estimate. Earthquakes losses to the economy of Chile are estimated at $15-30 billion. Location According to the USGS, the epicenter of the earthquake was about 3 kilometers (1.9 miles) off the coast of Peluhue, a town in the Mall region. This is about 6 kilometers, 3.7 miles west of the village of Chovalin, 15 kilometers, 9.3 miles southwest of the town of Peluhue and at a point approximately 100 kilometers, 62 miles away from the following four provincial capitals: Talca to the northeast, Linares to the east, Chilin to the southeast, and Concepcion to the south. Chile's seismological service located the quake's epicenter at about 34 kilometers, 21 miles off the coast of Nubal province in the Biobío region. This is 60 kilometers, 37 miles north of Concepción and 170 kilometers, 110 miles southwest of Talca. Topic Seismology and geology The earthquake took place along the boundary between the Nazca and South American tectonic plates, at a location where they converge at a rate of 80 mm in a year. This earthquake was characterized by a thrust faulting focal mechanism, caused by the subduction of the Nazca plate beneath the South American tectonic plates. The end regions of the rupture zone coincided with the Andean oroclines of Maipo 33 degrees south and Araco 37 degrees south. This has been interpreted as suggesting a link between upper plate, South American plate structure and rupture length. Chile has been at a convergent plate boundary that generates megathrust earthquakes since the Paleozoic era 500 million years ago. 
In historical times the Chilean coast has suffered many megathrust earthquakes along this plate boundary, including the strongest earthquake ever measured, which is the 1960 Valdivia earthquake. Most recently, the boundary ruptured, causing the 2007 Tocopilla earthquake in northern Chile. The segment of the fault zone which ruptured in this earthquake was estimated to be over 700 km long with a displacement of almost 10 m, or 120 years of accumulated plate movement. It lay immediately north of the 1,000 km segment which ruptured in the Great Earthquake of 1960. Preliminary measurements show that the entire South American plate moved abruptly westward during the quake. A research collaborative of Ohio State and other institutions have found, using GPS, that the earthquake shifted Santiago 28 cm to the west-southwest and moved Concepcion at least 3 m to the west. The earthquake also shifted other parts of South America from the Falkland Islands to Fortaleza, Brazil. For example, it moved Argentina's capital of Buenos Aires about 2.5 cm to the west. Several cities south of Cobquicura were also raised, by up to 3 m. The maximum recorded peak ground acceleration was at Concepcion, with a value of 0.65 g Topic. Compared with past earthquakes This was the strongest earthquake affecting Chile since the magnitude 9.5 1960 Valdivia earthquake the most energetic earthquake ever measured in the world, and it was the strongest earthquake worldwide since the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and until the 2011 Tohoku earthquake. It is tied with the 1906 Ecuador Colombia and 1833 Sumatra earthquakes as the sixth strongest earthquake ever measured, approximately 500 times more powerful than the 7.0 MW earthquake in Haiti one month prior in January 2010. Topic: <laughs> Aftershocks. An aftershock of 6.2 was recorded 20 minutes after the initial quake. Two more aftershocks of magnitudes 5.4 and 5.6 followed within an hour of the initial quake. The USGS said that, "...a large vigorous aftershock sequence can be expected from this earthquake." By 6 March UTC, more than 130 aftershocks had been registered, including 13 above magnitude 6.0. Shortly after the main shock, seismologists installed a dense network of seismometers along the whole rupture area. This network captured 20.000 aftershocks in the six months after the main shock and shows a detailed picture of the structure of the Chilean margin. Seismicity is focused in the depth range 25 to 35 km and in a deeper band of between 45 and 50 km depth. Around 10.000 aftershocks occurred in the region of two large aftershocks in the Picolemu region. A 6.9 magnitude offshore earthquake struck approximately 300 km southwest of, and less than 90 minutes after, the initial shock, however, it is not clear if that quake is related to the main shock. A separate earthquake of magnitude 6.3 occurred in Salta, Argentina, at 15:45 Coordinated Universal Time on the 27th of February, at a depth of 38.2 kilometers (23.7 miles). Two people were injured and one died in Salta. This earthquake was followed on the 1st of March at 6:32 Coordinated Universal Time by a magnitude 4.9 aftershock. 
Four other earthquakes above M5.0, some possible aftershocks, also occurred near the border in Argentina following the Chile earthquake. A magnitude 5.0 earthquake occurred in Mendoza on the 28th of February. A M5.3 earthquake in Neuquén and a M5.2 in San Juan on the 2nd of March, and a M5.1 quake in Mendoza on the 4th of March. Another strong earthquake occurred on the 4th of March at 22. 239 coordinated universal time in Antofagasta in northern Chile with a magnitude of 6.3. Minor quakes generated by the main one could be felt as far away as Sao Paulo, Brazil, located about 3000 kilometers, 1900 miles away from Concepcion. Since the major earthquake, and as of 15 March, at least 4 to 40 greater than M5.0 earthquakes have been recorded daily in the vicinity of the main earthquake, including four above magnitude 6.0 between 3 March and 6 March. On 5 March, two aftershocks above M6.0 were reported. The first was a 6.3 magnitude off the coast of the Biobio region. The second was near the epicenter of the original quake at 8:47 local time with a magnitude of 6.6.0 n the 11th of March. The March 2010 Chile earthquake, magnitude 6.9, treated by some as an aftershock of the February 2010 earthquake, was reported, followed quickly by further aftershocks measuring 6.7 and 6.0. The epicenter of the 6.9 quake was in Picolemu, O'Higgins region. On the 15th of March, two aftershocks of the February 2010 earthquake were reported, one at magnitude 6.2 at 8 hours 8 minutes and 28 seconds local time offshore mall, and another at magnitude 6.7 with the epicenter located offshore the Biobio region near Cobquicura at 23 hours 21 minutes and 58 seconds local time. This tremor was followed by two minor aftershocks, one occurring 45 minutes later, measuring M5.5. No tsunami was reported and there were no tsunami warnings issued. On 17 March, at 14 hours 38 minutes and 37 seconds local time, an earthquake of magnitude 5.2 was recorded in Aizen, in southern Chile. Another magnitude 5.2 earthquake was recorded in Los Lagos the next day. On 26 March, at 10 hours 52 minutes and 6 seconds local time, a magnitude 6.2 earthquake hit the Atacama region. In northern Chile, the Biobio region of Chile has had strong aftershocks of this earthquake. The first one was a magnitude 6.7 MW earthquake that struck off the coast of Biobio, Chile, at 23.21 on 15 March 2010 at the epicenter, at a depth of 18 km 11 miles. The second earthquake struck on land in the region at 22.58 UTC on 2 April 2010 at 5.9 MW and at a depth of 39 km. The third struck on 10.03 UTC on 23 April 2010 at 6.2 MW. The Pacific Tsunami Warning Center said that historical data indicates that this quake will not generate a tsunami but still advised of the possibility. On 3 May, at 19.09 a 6.4 MW earthquake magnitude struck off Biobio, Chile, at the epicenter, at a depth of 20 km 12 miles. The epicenter was 55 km 34 miles south of Le Burr. On 14 July 2010, another 6.5 magnitude earthquake occurred in the area. Topic: 2011 aftershocks. On the 2nd of January at 17 hours 20 minutes and 18 seconds local time, a 7.1 magnitude aftershock occurred 70 kilometers northwest of Temuco, Chile. On Lautaro, Canete, Nueva Imperial, Tragan and Carahui the quake was felt at intensity VI, strong of the Merkley intensity scale. In Temuco it was perceived at intensity V moderate. 
In Talcahuano, Concepcion, Chilin, Azorno and Valdivia it shook at intensity IV light. According to the USGS the earthquake's epicenter was located on the ground, east of the coastal town of Tirua in the Araucania region. However, according to the University of Chile's Seismological Service, the seismic event was located 134 km off the coast of Tirua, measuring a magnitude 6.9 ML. The University of Chile also reported that the localities who received the strongest shaking were Curanilahu, Labur and Tirua. In Concepcion, Talcahuano and Temuco it was felt at intensity V, and in Chilin and Valdivia at intensity IV, a magnitude 6.2 MW aftershock struck the coast of Biobio, Chile at a shallow depth of 15.1 km .4 miles on 1 June 2011 at 8.55 local time, 12.55 coordinated universal time. It was centered just offshore Araco province near a moderately populated area, with most structures in its vicinity reported to be resistant to earthquake shaking. Strong shaking registering at VI on the Merkley intensity scale was felt in Le Bur, just 7 km south of the epicenter, lasting for approximately one minute. Some residents in coastal areas panicked and evacuated their homes. The earthquake was followed by a moderate magnitude 5.1 MW tremor that occurred about 52 minutes later to the northeast of the main shock epicenter at an estimated depth of 26.9 km miles. Initial estimates from the USGS placed its intensity at a magnitude of 6.4 MW. Geophysical impact Seismologists estimate that the earthquake was so powerful that it may have shortened the length of the day by 1.26 microseconds and moved the Earth's figure axis by 2.7 milliseconds about 8 centimeters. Precise GPS measurement indicated the telluric movement moved the entire city of Concepcion 3.04 meters feet to the west. The capital Santiago experienced a displacement of almost 24 centimeters (9.4 in) west, and even Buenos Aires, about 1,350 kilometers (840 miles) from Concepcion, shifted 4 centimeters (1.6 in). It is estimated that Chile's territory could have expanded 1.2 square kilometers, 0.46 square miles. As a result, the earthquake also caused seiches to occur in Lake Pontchartrain to the north of New Orleans, United States, located nearly 7,500 kilometers, 4,700 miles from the epicenter of the quake. Topic: Damage and casualties. People were found dead after the earthquake struck, mostly under buildings and inside cars. Many people were also seriously injured. Most injuries were reported in Santiago and Mall. According to an Associated Press television news cameraman, some buildings collapsed in Santiago and there were power outages in parts of the city. A fire was reported in a chemical plant on the outskirts of Santiago and caused the evacuation of the neighborhood. Santiago's international airport seemed to have been damaged and the airport authority closed off all flight operations for 24 hours from around 12 o'clock Coordinated Universal Time. On Sunday, 28 February, Ricardo Ortega, head of the Chilean Air Force, said commercial airline services had been partially re established and aircraft were being allowed to land in Santiago. Santiago's National Fine Arts Museum was badly damaged and did not reopen until 9 March 2010. An apartment building's two story parking lot collapsed, wrecking 68 cars. According to one health official, three hospitals in Santiago collapsed, and a dozen more south of the capital also suffered significant damage. 
In Valparaiso, a tsunami wave of 1.29 meters was reported. The port of Valparaiso was ordered to be closed due to the damage caused by the earthquake. The port started to resume limited operations on 28 February. In Vina del Mar, a touristic city and part of Greater Valparaiso, several buildings were structurally damaged, principally in the district Plan de Vina. Many cities in Mall region were seriously affected by the earthquake. Kuranipe, only 8 kilometers 5 miles from the epicenter, was hit by a tsunami after the earthquake and still remained isolated from outside as of the 28th of February. A surfer said the tsunami Dot was like the one in Thailand, a sudden rise of water. One could not estimate the dimension of the wave, because it was advancing foam. There were 10 to 15 rises, the last one being at 8.30 in the morning." In Talca, the capital of Mall region, many dead were trapped in the rubble. The administrative building was uninhabitable, and the authorities had to be set up in the parade ground. All but two of the local hospital's 13 wings were in ruins. Dr. Claudio Martinez was quoted as saying, "...we're only keeping the people in danger of dying." Hospital staff attempted to transport some patients to Santiago on Sunday morning, but roads were blocked, damaged buildings and fires were reported in Concepcion. Rescue teams had difficulty accessing Concepcion because of the damaged infrastructure. The 15-story residential building, Alto Rio, fell backwards, horizontally lay on the ground, and trapped many of the residents. As the building was newly completed, 19 of the apartments were occupied and 36 were unknown if there were residents therein. A 2.34 meters (7.68 feet) tsunami wave hit Talcahuano, a port city and part of the Concepcion conurbation. The tsunami caused serious damage to port facilities and lifted boats out of the water. In the fishing town of Dichato, which has 7,000 residents, it was the third tsunami wave that ended up being the most damaging. Dilapidated buildings could be seen on the streets of Temuco, about 400 kilometers (250 miles) from the epicenter. The adobe of some buildings fell. Facades fell in pieces and crushed cars. Two people were reported dead because of not having been able to escape from a nightclub. On 27 February, it was reported that, "...to find an open business is almost impossible. Encontra un negocio abierto es casi imposible." In Chile, 370,000 homes were damaged. The final death toll of 525 victims and 25 people missing was announced by authorities in January 2011. This is down from early reports on 3 March of 802 people dead. The Chilean National Emergency Office Oficina Nacional de Emergencia estimated that the intensity of the earthquake was 9 on the Merkley intensity scale in the Biobio region and 8 in Santiago. USGS put the intensity in Talcahuano at MM8, in Santiago and Concepcion at MM7 and in Valparaiso at MMVI. On 10 March, Swiss Reinsurance Co. estimated that the Chilean quake would cost the insurance industry between $4 and $7 billion. The same estimate was echoed by the rival German based Munich Re AG. Topic. Modified Merkley intensities for some localities Notes, USGS equals United States Geological Survey, SS equals Chile's Seismological Service. Topic. Identified fatalities Topic. Population with destroyed or severely damaged homes 
The table below shows the percentage of the regional population whose homes were destroyed or were severely damaged by the earthquake and tsunami in the six most affected regions. The data were collected between May and June 2010. Source, Quezon Post Earthquake Survey, Ministry of Planning <laughs> Humanitarian response Despite President Michel Bachelet's earlier statement that Chile would only ask for international aid once it had assessed the extent of the damage, leaders of many countries and intergovernmental organizations, including the United Nations and European Union, responded to the earthquake and sent messages of condolence to the government and people of Chile over the loss of lives and property. Argentina, Mexico, the United States, United Kingdom, People's Republic of China, Singapore, Haiti, and Pakistan were among the countries that responded earliest following the quake. Appeals for humanitarian aid were issued by the UK-based Oxfam, Save the Children and Others. Chilean television host Don Francisco led a telethon called Chile Helps Chile with the goal of raising 15 billion pesos about $29 million needed to build 30,000 emergency houses. Mediaguas". The charity event, which ran for 24 hours in Santiago starting on Friday 5 March at 2200, was summoned by the government and organized by several Chilean NGOs. At 2300 on Saturday the goal was doubled, collecting 30.2 billion pesos about $58 million. .The Chilean NGO UN Teco para Chile constructed 23,886 transitional houses for families affected by the earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> Conditions in the aftermath Topic: Chaos and disorder. Nearly half the places in the country were declared catastrophe zones, and curfews were imposed in some areas of looting and public disorder. On the 28th of February 2010, a day after the earthquake, some affected cities were chaotic, with extensive looting of supermarkets in Concepcion. Items stolen included not only food and other necessities, but also electronic goods and other durable merchandise. To control vandalism, a special force of Carabineros police was sent to disperse rioters with tear gas and water cannons. However, measures were taken late. The outgoing president didn't want to remind people of the dictatorship years by militarizing the streets, thus failed to provide assistance on time to the city. When the situation became unsustainable and all sectors of the population were demanding actions, the government authorized the use of the military to control the affected cities. Despite these and other government acts including the curfews, pillaging continued in both urban and rural areas of the affected zones. Reportedly, military police arrested 160 in Concepcion on 1 and 2 March. In Concepcion, despite the militarization of the zone, mobs continued to steal from supermarkets and went as far as to set one store ablaze. The government warned looters they would face the full weight of the law, as penalties for stealing are increased under a state of catastrophe. A week after the quake the police—tipped by neighbors—arrested three people with massive quantities of looted goods stashed in their homes. Other looted goods such as mattresses, furniture, television sets and other electronic appliances were abandoned in the streets of Concepcion during the following days. According to the BBC on 5 March, the city and fishing port of Talcahuano, which lies but a few kilometres down the coast from Concepcion, has been left largely to fend for itself. Neighbourhood vigilante groups, including one led by a public works employee with a gun licence, and the few police present allow such behaviour as residents siphoning fuel from tanks at a petrol station, but step in if someone starts to attack a cash machine. 
One man stated, "'I've personally saved dozens of people from attack in this apartment block." Chileans living in regions not affected by the earthquake including those living abroad also grieved, as they sought to learn more regarding kinsmen and friends affected by the earthquake. In the hardest hit zones there was no communication with the exterior because of the failure of electricity and the destruction of telephone lines. <laughs> Prison escape In the prison of El Manzano in Concepcion, a prison riot began after a failed escape attempt by the inmates. Different parts of the prison were set afire and the riot was brought under control only after the guards shot into the air and received help from military units. By the 1st of March, prison guards in a prison in Chilin had recaptured 36 of 203 prisoners who had escaped following the earthquake. During their escape, prisoners burned seven houses close to the prison. A witness in Chilin asserted that he had been robbed by prisoners with a machine gun who had also forced his girlfriend to kiss them. Another witness alleged sexual molestation by around 20 men who were believed to be escaped prisoners. The leading Chilean newspaper El Mercurio described the situation in Chilin as reminiscent of the Wild West. Topic. Government response Four hours after the earthquake, when the death count was still low, President Bachelet gave a press conference in which she informed the population of the situation and stated that Chile did not yet need international aid. However, about 2 million people were affected by the quake with more than 500,000 houses uninhabitable. In many cities, people slept in tents, in parks or simply on the streets for fear of aftershocks. The government began distributing food and other vital aid around the country. On the 28th of February, President Bachelet said that her government had reached an agreement with the major supermarkets which would allow them to give away basic foodstuffs in stock to people affected by the earthquake. By 28 February, the Santiago Metro Rapid Transit Network was already partially up and running and expected to be fully operative on the following day, 1 March. On 4 March, President elect Sebastian Panera, who assumed office on of March, was quoted as saying that his goals were to cope with the emergency needs of citizens, find people who are still missing, provide prompt and timely assistance to the sick and wounded, and restore law and order so that people can return to peace. Economic recovery Authorities of the central port city of San Antonio speaking on 3 March 2010, stated that the port had returned to 80% of capacity. On the same date, Raul Macharana, a spokesman for the Federation of Port Workers Union, stated that the port of Valparaiso was operating normally. However, ports in southern Chile, which were closer to the epicenter, remained closed. On the 4th of March, President Bachelet said that Chile would need international loans and 3 to 4 years to rebuild. Topic Food scarcity On 10 March the National Commission for Agricultural Emergencies CNEA assured that milk and wheat prices would not rise, despite fears of lack of fuel supply for transport and harvest of these products. In the same CNEA report the mill associations of central and southern Chile are said to have expressed that they had currently no production difficulties. Despite this on the 11th of March newspaper La Segunda cited the president of the Bakeries Association complaining on unjustified price rises for flour, who said of cases of price rises of 10 to 20%, the earthquake affected production at the Campania de Servicerias Unidas CCU and Serviceria Chile factories that together have a 90% share of the Chilean beer market. 
With an average annual per capita consumption of 36 liters, scarcity caused prices to rise from 990-1500 to 2000 Chilean pesos per liter. CCU responded by increasing capacity of their plant in Temuco that did not suffer major damage during the earthquake and by importing beer from their factories in Argentina. Fifty trucks with beer are reported to have reached Santiago from Argentina. In March 2010, 10 CCU executives said that the country will not run out of beer and that within two to three months production levels would be normalized. Liquor store owners expressed complaints regarding a beer rationing scheme implemented by CCU. The scarcity favored consumption of premium beers like Kuntzmann and Pacina. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Tsunami. A tsunami warning was first declared for Chile and Peru, and a tsunami watch for Ecuador, Colombia, Antarctica, Panama and Costa Rica. The warning was later extended to a Pacific Ocean-wide warning, covering all coastal areas on the Pacific Ocean except the west coast of the United States, British Columbia, and Alaska. Hawaiian media reported that tsunami warning sirens first sounded at 6 o'clock local time. The U.S. Tsunami Warning Center issued advisories about potential tsunami of less than 1 meter 3 feet 3 in, striking the Pacific Ocean coastline between California and most of Alaska late in the afternoon or through the evening 12 or more hours after the initial earthquake. Although the earthquake killed far fewer people than the Haitian earthquake less than seven weeks prior, it was still devastating. The tsunami warning was cancelled for all countries except Japan and Russia in PTWC Bulletin 18 of 012 Coordinated Universal Time on the 28th of February 2010. In general, tsunamis tend to come in several waves, of which the first may not be the highest. The U.S. National Weather Service's Pacific Tsunami Warning Center issued a tsunami warning throughout a huge swathe of the Pacific region, including Antarctica. In the Americas, the warning extended to Chile including Easter Island, Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, El Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico, and Panama. A warning was also issued for the Oceania and Pacific Islands nations and territories of American Samoa, Australia, the Cook Islands, the Federated States of Micronesia including the FSM states of Chuuk, Cosre, Pohnpei and Yap, Fiji, French Polynesia, Guam, Hawaii, Jarvis Island, Johnston Island, the Kermadec Islands, Kiribati, Marcus Island, the Marshall Islands, Midway Island, New Caledonia, New Zealand, Niue, the Northern Mariana Islands, Palau, Papua New Guinea, Pitcairn Islands, Samoa, the Solomon Islands, Tokelau, Tonga, Tuvalu, Wallace and Futuna and Wake Island. Tsunami warnings were also in effect as far away as East and Southeast Asia including Japan, Indonesia, Hong Kong, the Philippines, Russia and Taiwan. Coastal areas of Canada's westernmost province British Columbia was under a tsunami advisory, and this was the most alarming advisory as the earthquake occurred during the same time as the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver. No large wave was expected to strike British Columbia, but strong local ocean currents combined with a wave put low-lying coastal regions at risk of flooding. The first wave was expected to reach southern British Columbia at 15.11 local time. Residents were advised to avoid beaches, harbors and marinas. A tsunami advisory was also issued for coastal areas of California, Oregon, Washington and southern Alaska in the United States. This tsunami advisory was canceled as of 7:13. United on the 28th of February, Russian authorities lifted a tsunami alert for the Kamchatka coast after the arrival of a 0.8 meters (2.6 feet) surge that caused no damage. The tsunami was also reported to be small along the Japanese coast, and passed without incident. 
Many coastal areas in Japan had been evacuated as a precaution. The projections used DART, deep ocean assessment and reporting of tsunamis, gauges spread along the sea floor, which is a fairly new technology. Initial deep sea readings showed wave height of 25 cm, which is huge for deep water, according to Gerard Fryer of the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. He went on to say, although it was huge, we didn't quite know what it meant because we haven't much experience with those. As we get more under our belts, we'll get better. <laughs> Chile. Some 30 minutes after the first shock, consecutive tsunamis hit coastal towns, among which Constitución suffered the hardest damage. Subsequently, a tsunami amplitude of up to 2.6 meters (8 feet 6 in) high was recorded in the sea at Valparaiso. A wave amplitude of 2.34 meters (7.68 feet) was recorded at Talcahuano in the Biobío region. Robinson Crusoe Island, the largest of the Juan Fernandez Islands, was struck by a large wave led to the deaths of four people on the island, with eleven people reported as missing, according to provincial governor Ivan de la Maza. President Bachelet is reported to have sent an aid mission to the remote island. As a precaution against the coming tsunami, partial evacuation was ordered in Easter Island, about 3,510 kilometers (2,180 miles) away from the coast of Chile. The tsunami wave arrived in Easter Island at 12:05 coordinated universal time, measuring 0.35 meters (1.15 feet) on the 27th of February. Defense Minister Francisco Vidal said that the Chilean Navy had made a mistake by not immediately issuing a tsunami warning after the earthquake, a step that could have helped coastal villages flee to higher ground sooner. However, an alarm was later sounded by port captains and saved some lives. Mariano Rojas Bustos, then head of Chile's Oceanographic Service SHOA, which is part of the country's navy, was later fired for the organization's failure to provide clear warnings about the tsunami. Oceania New Zealand Initially, the New Zealand Ministry of Civil Defence and Emergency Management CDEM said they did not expect a tsunami to reach New Zealand, but later issued a warning stating that waves of up to 1 metre 3 feet 3 in high were likely for the eastern and later the entire New Zealand coast. By 1955 Coordinated Universal Time 840 local, CDEM reported wave activity of 50 cm in the Chatham Islands, and 2 m surges were reported there later in the morning. A surge 2.2 meters (7 feet 3 in) high hit the South Island's Banks Peninsula, while surges up to 1 meter (3 feet 3 in) high were reported in the northern North Island. By mid-afternoon local time, civil defense had downgraded the tsunami warning to an alert, while still advising that sea levels could change quickly for up to 24 hours from the initial surge. Antarcticade U.S. Antarctic Program's coastal station along the Antarctic Peninsula, Palmer Station, went on a tsunami alert shortly after the earthquake struck Chile. To prepare for a possible tsunami, station personnel removed all Zodiac boats from the water and moved any materials from low-lying areas that waves could have swept away. Personnel also retreated to the station's highest building, GWR, while the tsunami warning was in effect, Ellis said. Palmer personnel developed a tsunami emergency plan following the 2004 earthquake in the Indian Ocean that created a tsunami that killed more than 230,000 people in 14 countries. While no noticeable tsunami occurred at Palmer, the station tide monitor displayed bumps of several centimeters, signifying that a small wave had indeed reached the shores of Anvers Island. 
Australia the Joint Australian Tsunami Warning Centre JATWC sent out tsunami warnings for New South Wales, Queensland, Lord Howe Island, Norfolk Island, Tasmania, and Victoria. The organisation warned of the possibility of dangerous waves, strong ocean currents and foreshore flooding to occur on the east coast of Australia for several hours on Sunday. As a result of the warnings, patrolled beaches in New South Wales and Queensland remained closed red flags, and lifeguards ushered people to leave the water. However beachgoers and surfers ignored the warnings. Numerous onlookers also crowded parts of the shore to view potential effects of the tsunami. The beach ban was lifted by the end of the day and there was no reports of damage, flooding or other emergencies. Tsunami waves of between 10 cm and 50 cm were recorded and their surges were believed to have created strong currents. Increases in sea levels include Norfolk Island 50 cm, Gold Coast, Queensland 20 cm, Port Kembla, New South Wales 14 cm, Southport, Tasmania 17 cm. French Polynesia wave measuring up to 1.8 meters, 5 feet 11 in, high struck portions of French Polynesia between 1550 to 1750 coordinated universal time with no reports of injuries as of February 28, 2010. A wave 4 meters high is reported to have struck Hiva Oa in the Marquesas Islands. The first waves were expected to hit the main island of Tahiti at approximately 1650 coordinated universal time, 750 local. Cars and other automobiles were banned from roads closer than 500 meters, 1600 feet from the Pacific Ocean. Rousseau France Outre-mer in Papeete reported that a wave measuring less than 1 meter, 3 feet 3 in, passed east of the Gambia Islands with no damage, according to Monique Richardson, the mayor of Rikatia. Residents of the Tuamotus, which are low-lying, were told to move to the highest points on the island. American Samoa's first wave was expected to reach American Samoa, which is still recovering from the 2009 Samoa earthquake and tsunami, at 8.51 local time. Lieutenant Governor I. Palasi Atofil Sunia urged residents not to rush to Aoloao, a high elevation area on Tutuila, as it could cause traffic jams, putting safety at risk. Many coastal towns, including the main city of Pago Pago, had already been heavily damaged in the 2009 tsunami. The first wave arrived on Pago Plaza at 21:58 Coordinated Universal Time. Filipinas The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology issued an advisory that tsunami waves were expected to hit the eastern coast of the Philippines on Sunday between 5 o'clock and 6.30 Coordinated Universal Time 1300 and local. Residents of 19 eastern provinces are advised to prepare for possible evacuation. However, at 15.15 on 28 February 2010, all warnings have been cancelled. Hawaii United States Senators Daniel Inuya and Daniel Akaka issued a joint press release announcing the first tsunami evacuation in Hawaii since 1994. Warning sirens were sounded throughout the state, as hotels in Waikiki evacuated tourists at 6 a.m. People in tall buildings were encouraged to move above the third floor. Waves measuring 2.7 meters high were originally predicted to strike Hilo Bay on the Big Island of Hawaii at 11:05 local time, 21:05 Greenwich Mean Time, but by 11:18, major receding and waves had not been reported on the shoreline. By 11:40, several waves hit the islands amounting to raising and lowering of the sea near the coast, and a fourth wave hit around 13:12. The tsunami warning for Hawaii was cancelled in the early afternoon on Saturday, 27 February. 
Gerard Fryer, a geophysicist for the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center was quoted as saying, We expected the waves to be bigger in Hawaii, maybe about 50% bigger than they actually were. Early in the morning, the center expected waves of 3 meters. In actuality, the highest tsunami waves ended up being about 1.5 to 1.8 meters peak to trough. North America British Columbia at around 2300 Coordinated Universal Time 1500 local, a tsunami warning was issued for coastal British Columbia. Extra precautions were already in place due to the 2010 Winter Olympics being held in Vancouver at the time. Californiasmal waves were expected in Southern California, and receding was reported at Long Beach. Minor damage was reported on some coastal areas. The tsunami damaged navigation buoys at Ventura. Additionally, a boat was torn loose from its mooring and minor erosion occurred within Ventura Harbor. Damage to docks and pilings in the area was moderate. Guerrero and Guerrero, surges of between 30 cm and 1 m and receding of up to 10 m were reported, and three small vessels were sunk at Tecpan de Galeana. The state tourism authorities announced they would be sending a letter to the CNN News Network to protest the alarming way in which it had forecast a tsunami for the major tourist destination of Acapulco. Tsunami-related aid given Argentina has sent construction teams to Chilo Island to help reconstruct some of the washed-away coastal buildings. In July 2010, the government of Argentina released a statement that they would lend $300 million to Chile for reconstruction efforts using Argentine goods. Topic. Data The following data, published by the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center and the National Tsunami Warning Center, lists measured and reported values of the tsunami when it arrived at specific places. Some data is taken from the Chilean Army. Topic. See also 334, Earthquake in Chile 2010 Chile Blackout 2010 Haiti Earthquake 2010 Picolemu Earthquake 2011 Puyehue Cordon Call Eruption Aftershock 2012 film List of 21st century earthquakes List of earthquakes in 2010 List of earthquakes in Chile Lists of earthquakes Seismicity of the Chilean coast The year of the tiger Notes <laughs> 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 <laughs>